The death toll from the brutal assault on Gaza has crossed 21,000 as Israeli attacks on the south of the territory continue. What is the latest from this besieged enclave? Argentine trade unions are taking to the streets on Wednesday against the policies of the newly elected Javier Millet government. What are the demands of the unions? This is the Daily Debrief. These are your stories for the day. And before we go any further, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. The brutal Israeli assault on Gaza continues as the death toll crossed 21,000. Graphic visuals on social media indicate that Palestinian men are facing inhuman treatment at the hands of Israeli forces. However, even now the international community fails to hold Israel to account. Meanwhile, across the region, from Iraq to Yemen, there have been military actions against Israel and in solidarity with the Palestinian people. We go to Abdul for the details. Abdul, thank you so much for joining us. So maybe first could you take us through what is happening right now with the Israeli assault, both uh, the air assault and the ground assault, we know that now uh, it is also taking place in the south of Gaza as well. So, uh, Prashant, in the last 24 hours, there has uh, the number of people killed in Gaza has increased by at least 300 to 400 people. And taking the total, uh, Palestine, total number of Palestinians killed in Gaza to 21,000 plus. Uh, it also means that the number of people uh, Palestinians in, injured has crossed 55,000. Uh, and and this basically uh, is a, is a it displays how brutal the Israeli assault is. Uh, in the last 24 hours, the Israeli ground offensive in Khan Yunis, in particular, has increased in southern Gaza. A large number of territories have been evacuated, uh, uh, the, uh, and it seems that the more and more Palestinians are forced to. Uh, kind of uh, flee out of their whatever homes were remaining. In fact, there were fight, there, there were ground offensives in, uh, in Jabalia refugee camp, uh, and which basically has completely led to the destruction of the uh, entire refugee camp. And uh, it is literally nowhere in Gaza which is safe. Uh, and that basically confirms to the larger Israeli scheme, which has been reported in media, from time and time again, time again, that Israel is basically forcing, uh, trying to force most of the Palestinians out of Gaza into Egypt, um, which, of course, uh, different human rights organizations have claimed that this would, this basically amounts to not only a, a kind of war crimes, it is also basically a, a amounts to complete uh, a violation of all established norms in the international uh, uh, law. Uh, uh, there are also reports coming that the, uh, the humanitarian situation inside Gaza, particularly in southern Gaza, has basically deteriorated further. Uh, basically, whatever hospitals were functioning uh, before the uh, offensive started in Gaza, most of them have, have shut and only eight uh, hospitals and small clinics are operational. This is happening at a time when the United Nations Security Council had passed a resolution, uh, basically, which, of course, had nothing else to say apart from the fact that it basically emphasized the greater uh, delivery of aid into Gaza. But since there is no uh, halt in the uh, bombing, in the ground offensive, it is difficult, as aid agencies have uh, reported, difficult to basically deliver aid inside uh, the Gaza Strip. This basically means that overall situation, both uh, 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 for the uh, people who are injured, wounded, and the pe common Palestinians who uh, in Gaza who have been forced out of their homes, the overall situation in terms of delivery to, of basic essentials like food, medicine, shelter, uh, uh, fuel is completely disrupted, and uh, Gaza has become com the humanitarian situation in Gaza has become completely um, out of control. Uh, also, the uh, uh, last point that uh, uh, in the last few days, uh, the communication system inside Gaza was completely disrupted. Uh, according to the Palestinian uh, Telecom uh, Department, the, uh, there is an attempt to revive the uh, communication uh, as if uh, uh, on um, Wednesday, but uh, it has not completely worked out yet, and the work is still going on. Right, also, taking a look at the regional dimensions here, we have seen yesterday that uh, there has been further escalation. The United States uh, bombing uh, on early Tuesday, uh, there are certain sites in Iraq as well, claiming that it's in response uh, to 
uh, attacks on bases. Uh, we know what's happening in the Bab el-Mandeb region as far as Yemen is concerned. So maybe could you take us to the regional aspect as well? Well, uh, uh, Prashant, before I come to the regional aspect, I should one, uh, definitely mention that there are reports coming from Gaza, which basically uh, shows a com uh, complete collapse of any uh, understanding of human rights. Uh, there are videos uh, circulating uh, on the social media or on the news channels, which shows that large number of Palestinian detainees have been stripped naked uh, and forced to sit in open, blindfolded, uh, uh, their hands tied behind their back in the stadiums, in the open grounds. Some of the people who were released later have claimed that they have been tortured uh, and, and kind of uh, drugged to kind of confess that they are ha Hamas operatives, despite the fact that the, none of them had anything to do with Hamas. So all of this is happening inside Gaza. And of course, this has a wider repercussion, both uh, uh, regional as well as global, given the fact that there are international laws established to prevent such kind of torture of prisoners of war. Uh, uh, so that is one thing, of course. As far as uh, the regional aspect is concerned, of course, um, in the last few days, the uh, 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 Israelis have attacked uh, southern Lebanon, uh, increased their attacks on southern Lebanon, and it looks like that uh, their situation, the situation there is not uh, is going to be as bad as uh, what is there in some parts of Gaza. The large number of homes, uh, houses have been destroyed. Uh, civilian infrastructure has been attacked. And of course, uh, whatever uh, small retaliation which Hezbollah is doing is not enough to deter Israeli aggression. Uh, you rightly pointed out that there are uh, U.S. carried out uh, uh, strikes again, uh, against multiple targets uh, inside Iraq, uh, on Tuesday, uh, claiming that this is in retaliation to uh, Iraqi militias attacking their bases, both in Iraq, in Erbil, and in and Syria, in which three uh, U.S. soldiers were injured. One of them was seriously wounded. Um, uh, this basically shows that the, the U.S. bases, uh, uh, as per the latest report, have been attacked since October 7 more than 100 times. It shows the popular anger in the region and the anger among the uh, militias uh, that the U.S. is supporting the uh, genocide of Palestinians in Gaza. Apart from that, of course, the Houthis have continued to attack the ships in the Red Sea, despite the fact that the U.S. has announced uh, so-called Operation uh, Prosper. Uh, pros sorry, Prosperity Guardian, uh, which basically is a coalition of all the NATO and uh, some of the uh, countries in other parts of the world. But the fact is, this, because of the pressure inserted by the, uh, uh, asserted by the Houthis, uh, most of the shipping companies have not uh, resumed their operation yet. And the ships to uh, Israel are not, uh, uh, of course, uh, moving. Uh, also, most of the NATO countries have been reluctant to uh, completely cooperate with uh, uh, U.S. in, the, in his uh, maritime alliance, despite their names being announced. So this is the overall situation when it comes to the regional and global aspects of the war in Gaza, which is going on uh, uh, by the Israelis. Right. Thank you so much, Abdul, for that update. Argentina is quickly becoming a frontline state in the battle between the people and a particularly unhinged version of neoliberal capitalism. In the short time since Javier Millet has come to power, a flurry of policies have been announced by his government which will affect most sections of the people, but especially workers. On Wednesday, Argentine workers and trade unions are taking to the streets against these anti-people policies. To get more details, we go to Zoe Alexandra. Zoe, thank you so much for joining us. So widely anticipated that trade unions, people's movements would take to the streets following the announcements made by Millet's governments. Quite shocking, actually. So, what are the kind of demands that these movements are making? What are the kind of, uh, you know, what are the kind of agitations that we might anticipate? Yes, um, all major trade unions in Argentina are on the streets today um, as part of a massive mobilization. Um, to reject the austerity measures of the government of far-right libertarian Javier Millet. Um, specifically, these trade unions, such as the Association of State Workers and the General Confederation of Work, the CGT, um, have called this mobilization um, because the um, decree that Javier Millet issued last week essentially says that um, uh, workers who have been working for less than a year 
um, do not get their contracts renewed. And this, according to trade unions, corresponds to at least 7,000 workers. And so that means that next year, 7,000 workers are losing their jobs, state jobs, um, because of the austerity measure of Javier Millet. Um, they're also, of course, raising their voices about the other measures that were mentioned in the decree of Millet, as we spoke about uh, in People's Dispatch on this show and others, um, this would drastically devalue, again, the Argentine peso. It has other impacts, um, of course, in reducing subsidies for transportation, um, for basic services in the country. Um, and it's, it's really seen as the first major hit to the working class in Argentina, um, to organized movements, of course, to trade unions um, and, and to workers in general um, who are preparing again for very, very difficult months ahead in Argentina. Javier Millet has said it himself, these are not gonna be easy months, it's gonna be hard. Um, a lot of economic pain, tiding again, the most basic of services, um, the areas where the Argentine people were able to manage, such as with transportation and with some of their services like electricity and gas, that will soon become untenable for many, many people. Uh, many people will find that they're unable to keep up with their payments, that they're unable to really survive on a month to month basis, um, which they were already struggling to do as we know that there are 40% of the population in poverty. So today's mobilization, again, momentous. We've already seen how movements in Argentina, how trade unions are building um, day by day this resistance which is going to be permanent throughout the presidency of Javier Millet. Um, Javier Millet became famous for a lot of the ridiculous things he said, um, the crazy slogans against the left, um, some of the more wild things uh, in his past, his outbursts, but at the end of the day he is a person who corresponds to a political project that believes that um, first of all, human rights don't exist, that social justice is uh, a threat to the people. Um, all of these fundamental ideas which are in contradiction with um, the possibility for people to live with dignity in the country, and especially, as we've said, in a in a situation of, of severe economic downturn. Right. 2022 been quite a complicated year for uh, Argentina, of course, uh, the, the major election, the kind of results that came out really shocked people and it looks like it's going to be a long struggle ahead for the people. So maybe could you do a roundup as we are ending this year, could you do a roundup of how the year has been for this country? Well, of course, as we just said, it ended with the victory of Javier Millet in the December presidential elections, but it has been a pretty tumultuous year in Argentina. Um, we know that just one year ago, Argentina was celebrating the victory uh, in the World Cup, a moment of jubilation, of joy. Uh, I think many people thought that that uh, wave of joy would continue, um, that this would that this would uh, increase support for the government of Alberto Fernandez. Um, this didn't happen. This is, of course, alongside um, as we entered the year of 2023, the lawfare campaign against Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner intensified. Um, a lot of the year was spent sort of waiting and seeing if uh, about what was going to happen in the presidential election. So as Javier Millet was rising in popularity, there was, of course, this legal battle uh, regarding Cristina Fernandez. Um, and her possibility of actually participating in these elections. There are many back and forths uh, regarding that. Um, legal decisions barring her participation. Um, finally, in the end, she was not able to participate and this was seen as a huge setback, of course, for popular movements, uh, given that she's really only the only viable, uh, was the only viable candidate who would be able to garner the support and the votes needed to, to, to defeat the center-right and the far-right in Argentina. Um, we know that uh, August, for example, saw the primary elections in the country where this the threat of Javier Millet actually became serious, um, where people actually took it into account that uh, this is not just um, some crazy guy who talks um, 
about how human rights are bad, but this is actually someone who could arrive to power. A lot of people are underestimating him. Um, and the appeal that he has uh, in Argentine society um, amongst young and working class people who have seen uh, their situation deteriorate drastically, not only other, under Mauricio Macri, but that continue to deteriorate under Alberto Fernandez. Um, and then of course, the, the last four months of the year was this very, very intense electoral dispute um, with uh, Sergio Massa actually coming in first in the first round of the elections, but then really un being unable to beat this right-wing coalition of Javier Millet, supported by the center-right with Patricio Bulbrich and Mauricio Macri. Um, so very difficult year, and you know people are already going into the new year with a lot of struggle, a lot of mobilization. Last week, we saw the first protests against Javier Millet on... Um, uh, December 24th, which is Christmas Eve, um, social movements held once again their uh, Christmas, no Christmas uh, with hunger. And so that means they have a huge, huge serving of food and activities for working class people in the country who don't have enough to, to really have that at their own homes. A very important uh, celebration, but also a, uh, a moment to uh, recommit um, people to the struggle um, and as I said today, um, Wednesday, December 27th, massive mobilizations organized by the country's trade unions. Um, this will be the first of many protests. I think we can look at um, the four years of Mauricio Macri's presidency to get a sense of what uh, does it look like when the Argentine movements really um, join together, unite, and are able to really fight uh, determined struggles against um, these austerity measures. I think we're going to see a lot. It's not just going to be Javier Millet pushing through these decrees, but there's going to be a lot of pushback on the streets and by the people. Thank you so much, Zoe, for talking to us. That's all we have in today's episode. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. Also, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and follow us on all the social media platforms. Thank you.